Hello, welcome to Soft Papers channel. My name is uh, Mr. Godfrey. Uh, this is coverage IGCSE uh, physics exams, uh, topical uh, questions on motion. Exam variant is October November uh, 2019. Um, I encourage you to uh, consider topical questions when you are revising for an exam rather than uh, doing uh, full past papers. Topical questions uh, will help you focus on a given topic. I encourage my students to first read the notes, read the textbook on a given topic, then come attempt topical questions which, are pro uh, pro which I usually provide to my students. And um, once you go through questions on topic, uh, topic wise, uh, you get an exposure on the examiner's mind on a given topic uh, over various years, 2019, November, uh, 2019, October, uh, June, 2018, uh, October, November, 2018, June. Uh, this uh, exposes you to the areas where the examiners uh, frequently ask questions. Therefore, that gives you an edge over the exam that you are preparing. Uh, in this video, I will be solving this topical question on motions. Um, plenty of uh, questions you can get from this site, uh, softpapers.co.uk. You can visit that site and uh, get yourself uh, these um, topical questions on physics, on chemistry, and even on maths if you are doing A levels. I teach um, uh, physics and chemistry, uh, both IG and uh, A level. And today I'll be only, uh, as you can see here, IG. Uh, before we start, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon below. This way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Uh, let's get started. Question number one. In every uh, question going forward, you'll be seeing this kind of um, writing there. Uh, what this means is that um, this tells you that the variant, of course, you know, uh, in physics, we have variant 1, 1, 1, 2, um, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, uh, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, uh, 4, 3. And this, of course, the multiple choice is variant 1 and 2. And uh, structured question is variant 3 and 4. And this was variant 3, uh, 2. Uh, o N uh, means October, November. Uh, 19 means uh, 2019. And this is the number. Uh, so uh, the number of the question was question number 1. Uh, that is on uh, variant 3, 2. You can always refer by checking this in every question I uh, I do. So um, question number 1. You are... Um, uh, you are told that uh, Fig 1.1 shows a water tank that is leaking, right? Uh, there is a leak right here. Water is dropping. Drops of water falls from the tank at a constant rate. A student, uh, part A, a student uses a stopwatch to determine the time between two drops hitting the ground. He sets the time watch at zero. He starts the stopwatch when the first drop hits the ground. He stops the stopwatch after further 30 drops. Further 30 drops have hit the ground. The radium of the stopwatch is recorded as shown. Okay, you can see the radium of the stopwatch right there. Okay. The radium of the stopwatch is right there. You can see the stopwatch here. Uh, the stopwatch is given in minutes, seconds, and uh, milliseconds right there. And um, as it reads here, it's 13 seconds and 20 milliseconds. State, part one, state the time taken for 30 drops to hit the ground. You just look at the stopwatch and um, the time is right there. So that's what you write, 13, 20 uh, seconds. It's given in seconds. Uh, so 13 seconds and 20 milliseconds. Part 2. 
calculate the average time between two drops hitting the ground. Right? Two drops hitting the grounds. After the first drop, the second one. Now, this drop here, uh, this time that is 1320, was for 30 drops. Uh, she counted 30 drops. Okay, further 30 drops. Right? So, this student counted 30 drops. So, the time given here is for 30 drops. The question is, um, calculate the time, uh, the average time uh, between the two drops. So what do you do? You take the time that is shown in the stopwatch, um, 13, 20 seconds. This is for 30 drops, right? So what is the time uh, for one drop after the first drop? So one drop will take how long? If 30 drops will take 13 seconds, 20, uh, 13, 20 seconds. What will be the time for one drop? You cross multiply, uh, then you get uh, 1320 uh, times 1 over 30. Uh, of course, this will give us over 30. This will give us uh, 0 0.44 seconds. So the average time for one drop, for two drops hitting the ground is 4, 4, uh, seconds. Part 3. Explain. Explain why the student measures the time for 30 drops um, instead of just measuring time for one drop. Explain why the student measures the time for third drops to hit the ground instead of measuring the time for one drop to hit the ground. Of course, um, this is to do with the reaction time and uh, minimizing uh, the uh, the error, uh, the time error that is uh, the student could be involved if they measure one drop. So this uh, is due to reaction time um, error effects. Or I can put it this way to reduce. To reduce reaction time error effects. When you are timing only two drops, after the first one hits the ground, then the second one to hit the ground will require you to react very fast. But if you take you count 30, the reaction time is uh, minimized and therefore the time uh, that you get as little error. Every measurement has got uncertainty, a degree of error. But of course, we try to minimize the error. Part B, Fig 1.1 shows that the drops get farther apart as they get close to the ground. Uh, state why the drops get farther apart. You can go to Fig 1.1. You can see here uh, the distance between this drop and this drop here, this distance is not the same as this one. You can see the distances are, in, are different. So as they get far, uh, closer to the ground, the distance between the drops uh, uh, increases. That is um, what you'll be told here. Um, state one, uh, state why the drops get farther apart. So of course. As the drops fall towards the ground, they are accelerated because they are acted upon by gravity. Of course, there is air resistance, but air resistance is minimal. So drops, in, um, as they get close to the ground, are traveling at a higher speed than when they started uh, uh, got out of the tank. So drops, uh, you say drops, uh, speed increases. The speed increases as they... Um, fall towards the ground, fall towards the ground, since they are accelerating, since they are accelerating. Okay, part C. 
In another experiment, the student determines the speed of a falling weight at different times. Uh, the speed time graph for the results are shown. Determines the speed of falling weight at different times, right? Um, you can see on the y-axis is speed, on the x-axis is time. Of course, you should always give the quantity with the corresponding units, uh, which is right there. And it looks like their speed is um, increasing with time. Um, question is, the question is, um, calculate, calculate the distance fallen by the weight in the first 1.5 seconds. The distance. So in a speed time graph, um, in a speed time graph, um, the area under the graph. The area under the graph gives uh, the distance uh, traveled. Okay, so um, uh, distance in a speed time graph is equals to area under the graph. Area under the graph. So the area under the graph uh, in this graph here, the whole of this, this is the area we are talking about is a rectangular that area is a rectangle and we know that uh, the area of a rectangle equals to a half base times height in this case a half times base is 1.5 from here to here 1.5 times the height the height you can see it's a uh, 15 uh, meters per second 15 of course, you can also redo it this way. This is 1.5 seconds times 15 meters per second. The second will cancel. So the unit that will remain there is meters. When you calculate nicely, <coughs> key in these values in your calculator, you will get 11.25 um, uh, meters. 11.25 meters. So the distance here is 11.25. Always be on the lookout, especially when you are doing um, uh, extended. Uh, some questions do not have the units given. So you are all supposed to supply the unit if it's not missing, if the unit is missing. As we proceed to question two, uh, let me say it's great you are watching this video. But remember, practice makes perfect. I encourage you to practice working out the questions, these questions yourself, as I guide you. You may get uh, this same paper that I'm solving right now from this site here, uh, solvepapers.co.uk. Uh, um, the site I'm talking about is this one here, uh, Soft Papers. This is um, a very resourceful site for IG. Uh, for coverage, you need to come right here, Physics 2019, uh, Topical Questions. Uh, you can also go to Pass Paper if you want. Uh, all these resources are available for download. Um, of course, uh, we go for Topical Questions. We are doing Structured now, not Multiple Choice. So go here, uh, Topical Questions for 2019. You'll find um, there are Topical Questions for 2019, 2018, 2017. Uh, 2016 all solved. Uh, we find uh, topical questions and into uh, structured questions and uh, multiple uh, choice questions. Uh, basically, this means uh, structured question is paper papers variant three and four. Multiple choice is variant one and two. Um, you can see the papers are fairly priced, uh, approximately nine uh, pounds. You can ask your parents to help you with acquiring these papers. And then um, you'll find all you'll find both solved and unsolved in the zip folder, and you can practice solving these questions. Uh, remember, uh, practice is key. Try and learn how to solve these questions yourself. Uh, very well. Uh, we said that. Let's proceed to question number two. Um, question number two is from variant three, three, and in that paper, uh, you'll find that question number two is. Uh, this one which we are uh, doing here right here. Uh, a student reviews some data 
about athletes and uh, footballers. An athlete runs 12 kilometers in 1.5 hours. Calculate the athlete's uh, average speed uh, in kilometers per hour, given the units. Of course, um, average speed uh, is usually a total distance um, traveled over total time. Okay, here total distance is 12 kilometers and the time taken is 1.5 hours and when you do uh, good calculations you find that the speed is uh, 8 kilometers per hour of course you're given units here you don't need to write the units again so 8 kilometers per hour is the speed of this athlete uh, let's go to part b in uh, fig 20 2.1, this figure here, uh, shows the speed time graph for Tubola for the first 15 seconds, uh, for the first 15 seconds right there, uh, of our game. Okay, he increases speed, speed stays constant, he accelerates again, speed stays constant, right? Uh, so, part one, use the graph in fig 2.1. To calculate the distance traveled by the footballer during the first four seconds. Distance traveled, right? Uh, distance traveled by this footballer. Okay, this graph is a speed time graph. You can see right here. This is a speed time graph. So the first four seconds is right there. So uh, to find the distance traveled for the first four seconds by the footballer, you find the area under the graph. This area here. The area under the graph from this, yes. so we find the uh, that area. Okay, so um, you can see this is a triangle. The, the area is in that is a form of triangle. The base is four, and the height is three, three meters, and the base is three seconds. So come down here. Um, so we know that uh, distance. Uh, in a speed time graph, distance in a speed time graph uh, is equals to area under the graph. Of course, the area under the graph is a triangle, so half base times height. Uh, the base is 4 and the height is 3. Therefore, this will give you um, cancel by 2 gets 2, and therefore 2 times 2 gives you 6 uh, meters, so the distance 6 meters. Part 2, use the graph, use the graph in fig 2.1 to determine when the footballer is moving with the greatest acceleration, alright? Um, of course, it's supposed to be between here and this kind of seconds, alright? Give you a reason. Because you don't need to calculate anything, just look at the graph. And um, he's only accelerating two regions, region one and the region two. That is where the acceleration is occurring. Uh, in this point, is traveling at constant speed. This point constant speed because the graph is uh, um, is horizontal. So he's accelerating in region two with a greater acceleration because the gradient or the graph is steeper. Can also say the gradient is um, is uh, great compared the uh, compared at um, uh, two and th one. The gradient of two is greater than the gradient of one, right? And that is between ten seconds and twelve seconds. So um, this is the acceleration is greatest. Acceleration is greatest at ten between ten and um, between 10 seconds and 12 seconds. Give reason. Um, it is where we have the greatest gradient. Gradient is greater here. Um, part, or you can say um, the slope is more inclined. All right, part C. Another footballer has a mass of 72 kg.
calculate the weight of this footballer. Of course, we know that weight is equals to mass times gravity. Right? Gravity is always 10 meters per second or 10 newtons. So this is 72 mass kilogram times acceleration, which is um, gravity, acceleration to gravity or gravitational field strength, which is uh, newton uh, per kg. So the kg will cancel and uh, 720 times 10 will give us 720 newtons. New units is given. When the unit is not given, you need to give the unit. Question three. Question number three is um, from an extended paper, uh, variant four one, and this is uh, number one. Most of the motion questions are usually number one or number two in most of the variants. Okay. Uh, so a car accelerates from rest. Rest is um, when it was initially not moving, when it was stationary. And uh, rest is time t zero, of course. Uh, its maximum speed um, to its maximum speed, fig. One point one is a speed time graph for the first twenty five of its of uh, twenty five seconds of its motion. Okay. Part a. The mass, the mass of the car is. 2300 kilogram for the first for the time between t0 and t0 is 5.0 seconds determine the acceleration of the car so uh, to get acceleration uh, from a speed time graph uh, we calculate the gradient acceleration is the same as a gradient so for the first uh, from t to t0 to t uh, is equals to uh, five seconds. So go back to the graph, right? Uh, from t is equals to zero to t is equals to five seconds. The graph is a straight line. So from time uh, t is equals to zero to time t is equals to five, the graph is a straight line graph. So the the acceleration is constant. So we find the gradient for this acceleration uh, gradient. Uh, I mean, find the gradient for that part of a graph. Gradient is equals to change in y over change in x. Change in y is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Of course, um, the coordinates of this point here is 0, 0. The coordinates of this point here is uh, 5. Uh, the x coordinate is right here. Need the y coordinate is right. So 15. Okay, so the gradient is uh, y2 is 15 minus y1 which is 0 uh, divided by x1, x2 which is 5 uh, minus x1 which is 0. So minus 0. So basically it's 15 divided by 5, which gives us uh, 3 is meters per second squared. Um, acceleration is uh, second squared. So acceleration is 3 meters per second squared. You can see there are no units given here, so you must apply the units. If you don't, uh, you not score these two marks. Uh, the resultant force acting on the curve. Of course, the resultant force is equals to mass times acceleration. And uh, we are given the mass of the car here to be 2300 kilogram times acceleration of the car uh, at t is equals to 0 to t is equals to 5 seconds, uh, which you have calculated here. You have found is 3 meters per second squared. And of course, when you multiply that, you get 6900 Newton. So 6900 Newtons. Uh, of course, the car can only accelerate if it's acted upon by a resultant force. If there's no uh, resultant force, 
the car will not accelerate very well. Um, part B. Part B. Part B. Um, and before we look at part B, uh, let me say that um, uh, I usually do online tuitions. I do online tuitions. Tuitions on a website we call SP Academy. SPAcademy.co.uk. I uh, welcome you to join me uh, to my online classes. The website I'm talking about is this site here. Um, call it SP Academy, uh, short of Soft Papers Academy. It's a um, site where um, we do our online classes. I'd like you to take time, uh, look at this document here, Student Guide. Click here for a step-by-step -step guide for students' dashboard functionalities. When you sign up, uh, you create your own account, you get access to a dashboard where you can book your lessons. Uh, you can also watch this video uh, to get familiar with our online uh, functionalities or classes. Um, we usually, currently we are offering ICT, Mathematics, Physics and Biology and Chemistry. Uh, of course, all the way from checkpoint to uh, A-levels. You can um, find time and look at what is in here? So I need you to come to uh, login. Uh, here at login, uh, you need to register. Of course, uh, you sign up. If you are a student, if you are a teacher, you can sign up. And of course, uh, provide a correct email address. Uh, we will send you an email address. You need to click. Uh, there will be a link in the email uh, to click to activate your account. Then you can come in and uh, uh, sign here then you can be able to find a tutor. Uh, we have got several tutors so, um, in the portal uh, currently. Uh, you can come here and find a tutor and the one uh, you find, uh, then you can uh, book a lesson with them and um, we will be happy to help you. Of course, we are teaching students from all over the world, Dubai, all the way to London, Manchester, Riyadh, Mecca, uh, Johannesburg, Pretoria, everywhere in the part of the world you are, we can reach you. So feel free uh, to request for a tuition. We'll be glad to help you. Um, have you said that? Uh, let's go to question part B. Right. Describe the motion of the car between T is 10 to T is uh, 15 seconds. Explain how Fig 1.1 shows uh, shows this. Okay, let's go back to the graph between 10 and 15. Between 10 and 15. This is 10. This is 15. Let's describe. Uh, the question is describe the motion of the car. So the car was accelerating. Then the graph uh, started curving and all the way up to when the graph is horizontal. Uh, from this point where the graph is horizontal, we know that acceleration is zero. And initially, acceleration was 3 meters uh, per second. So for the acceleration to come from, to change from 3 meters to 0, then the car should be decelerating. So between 10 and 15, at this region, the graph is curving up to here, the car is decelerating. So um, we are taught to explain how Fig 1.1 shows this. Of course, the I think 1.1 shows this because the gradient is decreasing. When you look at the gradient, uh, gradient um, at a tangent, uh, what we call tangent. Tangent is a line you draw touching a curve or a circle at one point. If you draw a tangent there and draw another tangent here, you find that the gradients of these tangents um, are decreasing. Okay, So basically, 
the gradient is um, decreasing. Remember, gradi um, gradient is equivalent to acceleration. So when the gradient decreases, it means that the car is decelerating. Okay. So uh, here uh, we say that uh, the car is um, um, the car is decelerating. The car, the motion of the car, the car is uh, decelerating. Decelerating is decreasing, um, decreasing the velocity, right? Uh, how does the graph um, show this? How does the graph show is this? Um, the gradient of the graph between 10 and 5 is decreasing. The gradient is decreasing from t is equals to 10 seconds to t is equals to 15 uh, seconds. Right? So you can also say, although the car's deceleration is increase, uh, decreasing, you can also see that the car is accelerating. Okay? The car is accelerating, but what is the acceleration? Um, the acceleration is um, decreasing. The acceleration is decreasing from three to zero. So when the deceleration, when the car, when the acceleration decreases from three meters per second squared to zero um, meters per second squared, we say the car is decelerating. But overall, the car is accelerating. The car is accelerating. Of course, the acceleration here is a decelerating. I hope I'm not confusing with you on that. Can Part C. Between 10 seconds and 15 seconds, the force exerted on the car uh, due to the engine remains uh, remains constant. Suggest, although the acceleration the uh, the car is decelerating, suggest and explain why the car moves the way it is should. Although the <coughs> the force remains constant, uh, the, we can see that the car speed um, the acceleration is decreasing, and this can only be because of the backward force. So, uh, if this is the car. Let me just draw something small here to explain this point. If this is our car, of course the steering wheel is there and it's going in this direction, right? Then there are backward forces due to friction and another backward force due to air resistance. Okay, so the res uh, air the friction uh, remains the same. Okay, this is the forward force. Right, we are told the forward force remains constant, and uh, for it to reduce the acceleration, then the backward force should be greater than the forward force. So, what between the F, uh, the friction and the air resistance, which force should be increasing, and that force should be the air resistance. So, um, uh, we say that air resistance. We are supposed to suggest. Air resistance of the car increases. Of the car increases. Remember, there are only two forces acting on the car: fri backwards friction and air resistance. And therefore, resistance is constant. So the only force that can increase is the air resistance. So uh, we know that air resistance increases. Air resistance increases with speed. Uh, that is the explanation. Air resistance increases uh, with speed. Air resistance increases with speed, and you can see here the graph at ten um, at ten seconds. The speed was let's say um, 
26 and at 15 seconds the speed is 29 so the speed is increasing from 26 to 29 so as the speed increases the air resistance also increases and that means that um, uh, the backward force is increasing while the forward force stays the same so basically um, the car decelerates the car will only accelerate if the forward force is greater than the backward force okay that's the end of this um, um, motion topical questions uh, 2019 October November uh, look out for uh, other topical questions from the same series October November 2019 you'll also get topical questions uh, on 2019 uh, June uh, you'll also get 2018 2017 all the way to 2016 uh, please go to soft papers go to soft papers and get all these uh, topical questions uh, work them out get in touch with me in my online classes if you want assistance and prepare thoroughly or adequately uh, for the forthcoming June uh, CIE exam series. I wish you all the best. Let's meet in my next uh, video. Bye.